Shalom, shalom. Kohala, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakak, Radash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone that taught me this word in all truth and sincerity. Salutations to the Akian that's out there on the highways and the byways teaching this word in all truth and sincerity. Salutations to the hopeful elect and a strong shalom to the Aquaf that's sitting and listening in silence as the scriptures say so. This is your brother Amoth, your eyes from Yahawada, coming at y'all with another spiritual lesson in the spirit. And I just wanted to uh, bring out a lesson on the forefathers and the the pedigree of Esau and Jacob. And Jacob, also known as Yasharala, Prince of the Power. Uh, I wanted to bring out a spiritual lesson on on uh, the righteous and the wicked. That's going to be the name of this lesson, the righteous and the wicked. And uh, I'm going to start at Genesis 25, uh, starting at uh, tw uh, verse 21 to 34. Uh, we'll be starting at verse 21 and stopping at verse 34. And then we will go into other various precepts on uh, Esau and then other various precepts on Jacob. Uh, so without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Genesis tw chapter 25, and we're going to be starting at verse 21 and stopping at verse 34. And verse 21, it reads this. And Isaac entreated the Lord Jehovah for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord Jehovah was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived, and the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord Jehovah, and the Lord Jehovah said unto her, Two nations are in in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his, came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. And the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his vision. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sought pot pottage and Esau came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore, therefore, was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me thy birthright, Slakia. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. So there was no crafty counsel being done to, to get the birthright. And as you, as you can say, and as you can see in the beginning uh, from verse 22 and 23, it was already in the will of the Most High, Yahweh, for Jacob to have the birthright. It was already predestined. It was already planned before the before the matter of fact. It was already planned before uh, uh, Rebecca and Isaac was even even brought to brought to the world. It was already planned. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's start it off with the wicked first. Let's start it off with the wicked first. 
Okay, so we're going to go to Salakia. Bear with me one second. Salakia, Salakia. Okay, well, I'm not going to go too much into it, but I'll just say this is this is will be uh, Genesis 36. Uh, this is verse one, and it reads this. Now, these are the generations of Esau, who was Edom. And this basically just lays out all the generations of him. Um, uh, let's read verse six, and it reads this. And Esau took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all the persons of his house and his cattle and all his beasts and all his substance which he had got in the land of Canaan and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob for their riches were more than that they might dwell together and the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Now, as you know, uh, Amalek is the is basically the head tribe of Esau, Edom. Those are the those are the 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 Jewish nation of Esau, the ones that are claiming your birthright, because uh, anything with I S H in it is pertaining to is to be like is to copy and to not be original, to not be. Uh, 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 just like just like I said, the original the the origination of it. You're pertaining to be something. You're not you're not the original uh, concept of that. Whatever you just just as well as I say, well, you're childish. Well, your pants are brownish. You're, you're, you're uh, whatever whatever with, with the is is basically pertaining to that. Okay, so let's 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 go get some uh, some milk, meat, water, and honey. What is it? Slock you. Let's go to Obadiah. All right, this is going to be Obadiah, and this is going to be obviously chapter one, and we're going to start at verse one. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord Yahweh concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord Yahweh, and an ambassador is set among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us raise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thy heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, Mount Seir, whose habitation is high, that sitteth in his heart, who shall bring, so like you, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Thou, though thou, ha, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. And basically, this is basically describing a hundred percent of what uh uh Salakia, uh of Edom, of how they how they exalted themselves and how how they see themselves and everything else. And uh let's jump down to uh, let's go to verse. Let's go to verse eight, and it reads this: Shall I not in that day say of the Lord Jehovah, even destroy the wise men out of Edom, and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? Uh, and they, and it's like in thy mighty men, O Tidim, Themen, so like Themen shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. And let's go to let's go to verse eighteen real quick. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord Yahweh have spoken it. Okay. Now let's hold on one second, Salakia. Bear with me one second. Got to jump back to something else real quick. 
So lock you. Give me one second. All right, okay, this is uh, going to be Genesis. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is Genesis chapter 27, and we're going to start at... We're going to start at verse 25 and it reads this. And he said, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's vision and it's like that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him and he did eat and he brought him wine and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he, and he came near and kissed him and he smelled the smell of his remnant. And blessed him and said, see, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field, which the Lord, which the Lord Yahweh have blessed. Therefore, Yahweh give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's son Bow down to thee, curse be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. So as you see, uh I'm not like I said, I'm not gonna um I'm not gonna go into the whole chapter of all these, but as you as you know in chapter uh twenty seven, Rebecca makes sure is that makes she makes sure that Isaac receives the blessing. So hold on, let me uh Give me one second here. All right, so this is going to be, we're going to jump down to. We're going to jump down to verse 34. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, bless me, even me also, my father. And he said, thy brother came with stability and have taken away thy blessing. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? For he have supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright and behold, now he have taken away my blessing. And he said, has thou not re reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, behold, I have made th him thy Lord and all his brethren have I given to him for servants and with corn and wine have I sustained him sustained him Salakia and what shall I do now unto thee my son and Esau said unto his father has thou but one blessing my father bless me even me also O my father and Esau lifted up his voice and wept and Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shall thou live and shalt and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion that thou shalt break, break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. So as you can see, Esau's main blessing was the sword. And he he obviously has the fat, fatness of the earth right now. And he obviously had us in slavery. And he obviously broke the yoke off our neck. And now it's time for him to serve as punishment. Plain and simple. There's no way around it, Esau. All right, let's go to uh, Salaki one second. Get to this now. We, we, we still on the wicked. We still on the wicked. And Salaki, if I um, mispronounce some words and all that, but I gave you the, the lines where I was at, and you can read it for yourself. Okay. <clears throat> this is going to be Daniel chapter 7. And we're going to read verse 25, and it reads this. 
and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until, until a time, and times in the dividing of times. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. So, as you as you can see and as you know that Esau has had, had a lot of power in his hands and had, had, had a lot of things to do with changing times and, and wearing out uh, 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 Yasharala, Israel, the 12 tribes, wearing us out, killing us, using our kids for, for bait, you know what I'm saying, having no remorse for, for the old or young, you just, just completely... Uh, uh, genocide of, of com just completely doing us wrong man it's, it's I just it's so vexing man it's just it's it's just so much man it's it's just it's a lot it's 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 it's, it's a lot man it's 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 a very much a lot man it's very vexing all right well we're gonna get to uh, this is gonna be Malachi this is going to be verse uh, chapter chapter one and verse one, reading down to uh, uh, I want to say maybe verse five or maybe we'll start at verse four. We'll see the burden of the word of the Lord to to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord Yahweh. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord Yahweh. Yet I yet I love Jacob, and I hated Esau. And laid his mountains and heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are improv impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord Jehovah have indignation forever. And your eyes shall see and ye shall say, the Lord Jehovah will be will be magnified from the border of Israel. There's no way around it, man. There's no way around it. All right, let's 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 get on the righteous now. Let's let's talk about the righteous. Let's talk about the righteous now. And see what we had to endure. To see what we had to go through. Okay. All right, we're going to start at Deuteronomy. Uh, we're going to read verse 1, and then I'm going to jump to verse 15. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, and it reads this. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, Jehovah, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God, Jehovah, will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. All right, we're going to drop down to verse 15 and it reads this, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, Jehovah, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So obviously we went off. We didn't listen to what, what, what the heavenly father, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah had to say to us, and we had to be chastised for, we had to be punished, point blank, period. So the main punishment, I'm going to go to the main punishment. Because 28 is, is all all the punishments. But I'm going to go to the main punishment just to get to the point. And this is going to be it's the same chapter 28. And it's going to be verse 68. And it reads this. And the Lord, Yahweh, shall bring thee into Egypt. Egypt is another word uh, uh, synonymous for bondage. And uh, just for verification's sake, to prove it and not just say it out of my mouth. Let me, let me read it in a different chapter, in a different book. So you can have the meaning of it. All right, this is Exodus chapter 20, and this is going to be verse 2, and it reads this. I am the Lord thy God, Jehovah, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So as I stated, Egypt is a, another word for bondage, which is also slavery. So we'll just take out the word Egypt right now. We'll just put the word uh, slavery in for it. And I'm, I'm just going to read this, 68. And the Lord, Jehovah, shall bring thee into slavery again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt thou shalt see it no more again, 
and thou and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall redeem you. And so like and no man shall buy you. So basically we're not gonna see our homeland again. Uh we're gonna be sold to our enemies, which is who the main people that they were sold to in the Americas was the so called so called white man, which is Edom. Uh for for slave women, slave men, um, and when it when it says that no man shall buy you, it means no man shall redeem you out of the, out of your captivity, out of your slavery, such as uh, 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 uh Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, etc. All the Black Panthers, you know, nobody's nobody was able to redeem us. The only person that's going to be able to redeem us is the Heavenly Father. Okay, all right. So let's go, Shalakia. <clears throat> We still on the, we on the righteous we on the righteous uh, Israel we on the righteous. Let's go to Isaiah real quick Israel. Salakia, okay. That's the spirit hop right to it. Okay. All right. This is going to be Isaiah twenty nine, verse uh, Salakia. Isaiah chapter twenty nine, and this is going to be verse twenty two. Therefore, thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. So, it's like, let me go to read verse 23. But when he seeth his children, the work of my hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and shall fear the God, Yahweh of Israel. So, as you know, he is not, he's not forsaken us, man. Um, let me go to, I want to go to something else too. I want to go to, let me get to it real quick. Salakia, Israel. Salakia. Salakia, bear with me. Uh, this is Psalms chapter 147, and we're going to start at verse 19. He showeth his words unto Jacob, his statue and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh. So that, I want to bring that out because I just want to state that Israel who was who was once Jacob, his name was changed to Yasharala, also known as Israel. And he that that lineage only came to the the the, the birthright, the chosen people, all that came to came to uh, Israel. As a matter of fact, give me one second here. Let me read that. Let me read that right now. Let me get that out the New Testament because I know you y'all y'all New Testament Israelites and Christians and Baptists y'all like to. Go off of Paul. So let's let's see what Paul said. This is a uh, chapter uh, Romans chapter nine, and we're gonna start at verse three. For I wish, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Hamashiach came, who is over all, Yahweh, blessed forever. Amen. Okay. 